If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and so many more places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, it's totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with RJ. If this is your first time listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow so you know exactly when we release brand new episodes. And also don't forget to follow. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject that a lot of feminists out there have been arguing nonstop, and there's a lot of men out there arguing for and against but you see the thing about making real arguments if you're going to like debate a subject or really um express disagreement and look for solutions it's really important to not bring out biased or manipulated information like a lot of people bring out uh bias and manipulated information to uh prove a point like the subject of abortion. It's a very popular subject right there after the the Supreme Court rule uh, overturned Roe v. Wade. And a lot of people were out there saying, well, a whole lot of women are going to die now because, you know, they're having ectopic pregnancies, which actually is factually when the baby is already dead or when the, the fetus is already dead and then they're bringing out the baby. So essentially they're not aborting the baby. The baby's already passed away. Um, and then there's other people saying, oh, well, you have all these people out there who are victims of rape and incest. And, you know, this is not at all to shame any of those people. But having said that, the overwhelming majority of, uh, of pregnancies leading to abortion are the result of women who just don't want to be mothers at that time. You know, and they're not talking about that being the majority of reasons for abortion. They always want to talk about the minority cases. But what about those poor girls that don't have access to medical care? What about those girls who were raped and got pregnant? You know, like, I, me personally, as a conservative, like, I don't believe that a woman who did not make the choice to consensually have sex, I don't believe she should be forced to carry a baby. That's just my personal opinion. People can disagree with it or not. But the fact is that that was not her responsibility and risk of getting pregnant. She didn't request that. She didn't consent to it. So I just I don't think it's fair for her to have to suffer the consequences of a pregnancy if that's not what she asked for. But like if I go, I've always said this before, if I go rob a bank and I go to prison, I can't be mad. You know, I robbed a bank. That's the consequences. If you have sex with somebody, the the, the risks are having a baby. That's just one of the things. So, you know, there's consequences with actions and to to come up in in, uh, nurture a society where consequences are biased or waived or non-existent that's a very dangerous society of itself that's a that's prime that's um prime breeding ground for an anarchist state but here's the thing in every anarchist state where there's no government there will always be a government let me explain what i mean by that when we took down saddam hussein uh when when they found saddam hussein when they took him down I was in Iraq, like, not too long after that. My unit was responsible for providing the first ever election since Saddam Hussein took power. And, you know, we started, you know, helping them and women and men alike were coming down to vote for their, you know, for their next leader. Um, They were happy, they were free, but there was a lot of sympathizers of Saddam Hussein. And, you know, there's two very big uh, 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 factions out there, if you will, one being the Shiite, group and the other being the Sunni group um to my understanding the difference between the Shiite and Sunni are basically who has the right to lead Islam whether it be a direct, a direct descendant of, of, Muhammad, of the Prophet Muhammad excuse me the Prophet Muhammad or it is anybody else who fits the description of a good leader you know so essentially that's like to my understanding those are the basic beliefs um that conflict um, with the Shiite and Sunni. So when the majority of the people had actually elected a member of the Shiite um, group, Sunni individuals assassinated them. 
And then they placed a Sunni individual in power and Shiite individuals assassinated them. So this kept happening back and forth. So when you take down a government, people will always rise up for power. And they always come out with the guise of, we want to help you. We want to give the power back to you. We want to protect you because they need your support to take advantage of you. Think about it. A con man cannot possibly con you out of anything if you won't let them. If a con man comes up to you or a con woman comes up to you and goes, hey, um, you know, can you give me your bank account information so I can get in there and I can straighten some things out there, probably put a little extra money in there. You go, sure, I'll give you my bank account information and you do it. They couldn't have done it without your help. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the facts. And that's what a lot of politicians do. They make all these promises to, you know, to pretty much make sex to your ears and make you appreciate um, that they actually care. Oh, my gosh. Finally, this politician, oh, they're saying exactly what I need to hear. I know they are. That's the whole point. They don't care about you. They always say, within my first hundred days, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm going to solve this and this. And they get in there and they don't do any of it. They start doing things that somehow, some way you got to pay for. And then you're like, what the heck? So this non, uh, this non-consequential lifestyle that we are cultivating by saying, everyone's a winner don't worry there's nothing wrong with it i accept you for everything no matter who you are what you are i accept you it's not helping it's actually causing more detriment and that same mentality is actually leading into a very toxic feminist mentality now the original feminists were like bold warriors these women wanted to vote because they felt their voice was equal which i support 100 percent you know, I don't care how strong any man was, not a single one of those men who were great were single alone. Every one of them had a very strong woman figure in their life. That's how they were able to achieve that mental strength. Women have, and this is not me sucking up to my women listeners out there. This is me just being honest. As I always say, this episode or this show is called Real Talk with RJ for a reason. Women have a way of being mentally strong more than men could ever dream of. We get our mental strength from women it's just a fact because i'm telling you like look at look at the facts look at just be honest with ourselves guys when we get a headache we're down for the count we're down we don't want to get up we don't want to wash dishes we don't want to move we just want to sit there until the headache stops and that's a headache meanwhile there are women eight months pregnant at work sitting there having a baby kick their stomach and sit on their spine and sit on their uh their um they're uh they're i can't remember the name of the of that vein or the the, ner the nerve um sitting on one of the nerves to actually put their butt to sleep you know or, uh oh, i can't think of the name the sciatic there it goes the sciatic nerve they're sitting on the sciatic nerve or putting pressure on different parts of the body and women come home with their back hurting like and then their their breasts tend to grow so now their back is hurting even more from carrying more weight in the front of them so they have to lean back putting more stress on their spine and their back is hurting yet they are still there at work making a living meanwhile us men out there oh my gosh I'm so my head hurts i can't do it so mentally men are not as strong as women i i just that's my experience in seeing Man, and I, again, I've been in the Marine Corps. I've been in the military. Men can be very mentally strong, but when you look at the men who are mentally strong, often they have a mentally strong mother or a mentally strong sister or a mentally strong wife. That's usually how they're mentally strong. They get it from women. Women have a mental toughness that make men stronger. And men have a physical toughness that also influence women as well. So... I said all that to say that the, the original feminist movement out there was about equality. It was about fighting for equality. And now somehow it is morphed into this whole different organization where women are fighting for superiority under the guise of feminism. They're saying they want equality, but they don't. They want superiority. We got female athletes out there saying that they demand equal pay. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of this equal pay, these claims that they're saying. 
we hear people talking about oh the WNBA um you know it wants to be paid the same as NBA players and it's so wrong that you know WNBA athletes are not getting paid the same well I looked up some figures today just to make sure that my arguments are landing on truth according to uh, statista.com the WNBA grosses about 60 million dollars per season and I also saw that off of dunker3.com but it costs 70 million dollars to run so every year it loses 10 million dollars every year the WNBA loses 10 million dollars because of the salaries that they got to pay the finances that they don't they're actually these owners of these teams because usually these uh team owners are actually the owners of the of the NBA team as well um <clears throat> But these people are making lots and lots of money. So $10 million is like, you know, it's a tax write-off that they can go and say, well, I lost, I lost X amount of money. Of course, not each team. Uh, each team is not losing $10 million. But like the league itself is losing $10 million, which each owner uh, dividing up their portion just kind of use that a tax write-off or other things where they're not losing too much. But it costs them $70 million per season to run the WNBA but they only gross about 60 million. And people are out there saying, well, that's because they're not getting paid the well. No, no, this is how much money they're making. Why should you pay them more than what they're making? That's not fair. That's not equal treatment. You know, if you have somebody who's a rocket scientist come into a job and somebody who's not a rocket scientist doesn't fit any, any criteria for that position, are you gonna pay them the exact same amount? Absolutely not. You're going to pay the person that brings more to the table. You're going to pay them more. That's just common sense. That's common business. That's how it goes. Now, let's look at the figures for the NBA, the men's basketball league. They gross, excuse me, according to statistics.com, they gross about $6 billion with a B annually. $6 billion with a B. So the reason why they're getting paid more is because they're bringing more money in. They put on more of a show. A lot of people out there who are like, I hate that the women's uh, basketball is not getting paid the same as men's basketball. Have you ever been to a WNBA game? You can always tell that somebody, like how well somebody entertains by how many seats are unavailable. I went to go see Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias, a comedian, a worldwide comedian that is just extraordinarily funny. I went to go see him in Dodger Stadium. That is a massive stadium. And he sold it out twice. I went to go see him and I, I took pictures. I'm, I'm sitting right there on the field, um, really close to where I could see him. He puts on some great shows. He's so gracious. He's an excellent entertainer. He doesn't have any bit of arrogance where he thinks he's better than anybody. He's so approachable. He's just as, he's as humble and as real as, as comedians get. But there was not a single empty seat in that whole stadium. This is a baseball stadium. And on top of the, the stands, the thousands and thousands of seats in the stands, the field is packed with people. So when people are like, well, how come comedians get paid different, whether you're male or female? Well, because statistically, female comedians don't demand the same attention as males do. I know that might not be something you wanna hear, but numbers don't lie. When you're in the entertainment industry, you will get paid as much as you're worth. If you, if your character, if your actor, uh, your your appearance can demand X amount of dollars, then you can get X amount of dollars. You know, if George Clooney goes on uh, acts in a movie, uh, excuse me, in a movie with some unnamed actor, that unnamed actor is not going to get as much money as George Clooney. When um. I forget his name. The kid that the newest uh, version of Spider-Man actually played on the Avengers. I think his name is Tom Holland. Um, wow, I said I forget it. I forgot his name and then guessed it accurately. That's funny. Um, Tom Holland didn't get paid a whole lot when he first started out with the Avengers because you know he's an up and coming. They're not going to pay him the same that they were paying, you know, Liam Hemsworth. Hemsworth, not Hemsworth. Excuse me. It's because people didn't know his face. People didn't know him. So when people are saying that men are getting paid more, you have to understand men are the majority of the workforce. So to cherry pick a certain small figure and then say that applies across the board, that's not correct, it's not fair, and it's not honest. Because yeah, when you talk about the top 100 or top 1% of the most wealthy people in the world, they're all men. 
Well, what about the 90% of men that are not, or the, excuse me, the 99% of men who are not in the top 1%? Oprah Winfrey and and um, uh, Martha Stewart make way more money than most men in the world. So it's not a thing about he said, she said, or he's better, she's better. It's a fact of you. If you bring enough to the table, you can demand what you get paid. Wendy Williams doesn't make as much as Oprah does, and Oprah doesn't do talk shows anymore. So when you're talking about oh men should be getting paid the same as women let's be fair let's talk about when they should get paid the same as women if a female goes out to the navy seals and she passes all just like the movie gi jane but like real world if a woman goes out to try out for uh, buds which is what stands for um basic under uh, underwater demolition and seal training that's you know their their basic boot camp kind of thing um so if a woman passes all these uh, classification certifications, they're, just so you know, they do not decrease the standard for a woman. If a woman goes out and tries out, she has to meet the exact same standard as men. So if she's in the attrition rate for the Navy SEALs is well above 60 percent, meaning over 60 percent of applicants who get into basic underwater demolition and SEAL training, they get washed out. They quit or they get injured or sometimes even killed. The training's dangerous and it's hard. So when people are out there saying, oh, well, the standards should be the same. No, you should not get paid just because of your sex. That is as absurd as like, I'll get back to that. Um, but saying if a woman goes in there and becomes a seal and passes buds, she has to meet the exact same standard as men. And if she does, she will get paid the exact same. She doesn't get paid different. In the military, sergeants don't get paid based off of sex. You get paid based off of your rank and your timing grade. And if you're deploying, if you're married, if you have kids, if you have your own house, or if you have a, a house on base, or if you're living off base, a lot of fa factors go in and they pay you across the board fairly. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. But when you're talking about athletes, when you talk, if you looked at the WNBA and you see how many empty seats there are, I've, and I, I've said this in a recent episode, I've looked at the front row seats, like the courtside seats, the courtside seats to the Los Angeles Sparks game, which is, you know, it's, it's a pretty popular um, venue. It's a pretty popular team. It's, you know, it's, it's right there in Lakers house. If you look at the uh, Los Angeles Sparks and you go down to the courtside and you see the courtside seats. They cost about 600 bucks to sit courtside on any given game courtside seats for a Lakers game are like 11 to $14,000 on a regular off season game. They're very expensive because people are willing to pay that. No one is going to pay $11,000 to go watch a WNBA game. Why is it that people leave so many seats unfilled in these games? It's because they're boring. I know people, I know especially feminists don't want to hear that, but the numbers don't lie. If it were entertaining, people would be there. They would sell out. And I'm not trying to sexualize women, but let's talk about entertainment. Look at, look at strip clubs. They're full of guys because they're entertaining. If they were not entertaining, they wouldn't be full of guys. If you're looking at the Olympics, they're full of athletes. People go in there and watch the Olympics. They don't watch men swimming more than they watch women swimming. They watch swimming, period. They watch these sports because they're entertaining and they're working. And they're supporting the athletes because the athletes are standing for something they relate to. But when you go to a WNBA game, you're not seeing dunks. You're not seeing skill and like uh, swag. You're not seeing a show. You're going around there and you're seeing women lay up. It's like watching basketball practice in high school. It's boring. I'm an avid supporter of women's sports. I think because I, you know, when I have a daughter one day, I want my daughter to grow up thinking that she has a future in sports if that's what she wants. But we have to be realistic. If we're going to make women's basketball interesting and entertaining, they're going to have to lower that hoop because the average height is significantly less than the average height in, male, sport, in uh, male basketball. They need to lower the rim a little bit so women can get up there and dunk and put on a show. Because those women are just as gifted as a lot of those men in there. 
but the rim is just out of their you know out of their reach out of most of their reach so they can't dunk but dunking is a big thing it shows a lot of attitude it shows a lot of power it shows a lot of intimidation but you know they've suggested lowering the hoop and a lot of the WNBA stars are like no we don't need you to lower the hoop that's pride at some point if they don't lower the hoop or make adjustments to make their show better because at the end of the day basketball is, a, is an entertainment show yes it's a sport but whether it's male or female it's a show so if the women excuse me if the WNBA are not willing to lower the hoop and put on a better show people are just going to stop watching and the um every WNBA uh, uh, team is going to end up being just like the Sacramento Monarchs the Sacramento Monarchs used to be a WNBA team for Sacramento California and once they they won they won the uh they won the fi- uh, the trophy they won the um the finals and that was the first time this uh the um, Monarchs ever won a championship in their history and right after they did that, the owners sold the team and they disbanded it because it was worth the most money it was ever going to be. And they knew that WNBA is not something you want to invest in. They're just, they're not putting on a show. And that's just a sad reality. So no, WNBA athletes should not be paid the same as NBA athletes because they're not pulling in the same amount of money. Now, I looked at some figures for the United States men's soccer team and I looked at figures for the United States women's soccer team. And according to statistic, yeah, statistic.com, the United States men's soccer team in 2016 and 2018 was making or grossly, uh, excuse me, grossing about $49.9 million per season. You know, that's that's how much they were uh, they were making in that time. And the United States women's soccer team in that same time from 2016 to 2018 made about 50.8 million. They made more. Now, um, it's not a whole lot more, but nonetheless, it's more. And I believe that people should be getting paid, you know, what they're contributing. They should be getting paid based off of what they're making. I don't think that anybody should make more than the other person if they're not contributing as much. I think the pay should represent um, what they're actually saying. Hi, welcome to the show. Hey, how is how's it going? It's going wonderfully. How are you? Uh, I'm well. Uh, I wanted to kind of piggyback on this. I, I, I completely agree. And, and whether people like it or not, it's the bottom line, you know, and, and I'll even go to uh, a male based uh, uh, example, kind of go to this. The Big Ten just signed a huge media deal with three networks, right? Wow. And it's $7.7 billion over the next seven years after after this next season. And people are thinking, well, good Lord, what, what do you think the SEC is going to pull in when they get their next deal? And I will guarantee you it's not going to be anywhere close to that because of the amount of people that the Big Ten can reach. Yep. They just expanded to L.A. So right now the Big Ten controls the top four media markets in the country with twice uh, twice the amount of viewer potential viewers than the SEC has over twice the amount. Wow. So right there is wow. where where you're looking at is those 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 networks are looking at wow, we've got 30 million people that are at the hands of the Big 10. We need to pay them money because we're going to make a boatload of money on top of a hand over fist over that 7 billion dollars that we just shelled out. Absolutely. And it's because of the demand and and it's and how much they can reach the nba has such a huge reach that they warrant eleven thousand dollar court side seats whereas the wnba doesn't pull in the amount of revenue that the nba does so it, i the example that i just used is a male to male comparison and it, it and i think that is where you're going with the fact that you know if if a league can bring in that much money, then it, the people inside that league deserve more money Absolutely. because they're bringing Absolutely. in way more revenue than what the league, the, the WNBA. Is. Absolutely, that's Absolutely. exactly what I was going for. Yeah, and, and and it's not not that I don't support you know women being able to you know compete at a at a professional level, but it's just a different level right now. Yeah. 
And you know what? I, I, I agree 100% with that because right now, like when you go, like people clear their schedules and want to go to a WNBA game if you're a basketball fan. But yeah, people, for the most part, it kind of feels forced. Like you're going to the WNBA game, like I mean forced toward WNBA. You're, it, you're forcing yourself to go just so you can keep the WNBA alive. And it shouldn't feel that way. People should want to go to the sport they're supporting. It shouldn't feel like a charity event. Mm-hmm. And there are avid WNBA fans because those are the purists that don't want to see all the dunking and the showboating necessarily. And and they've got their fans that are diehard because of that. But the general most, like, you know, just passerby fans want to see, you know, monster dunks or they want to see the the you know just things that at, at the level at the height like you said lower the rim a little bit because then you can get that and you're going to bring in the general joe schmo fan because you're seeing awesome dunks over people you know or or whatever you know that 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 type of thing yeah and it's kind of like i think it's kind of like uh, not too different from you know going with your kids to go watch disney on ice or something like that Disney on Ice, when they put on those performances, it's not boring to the parents. There's a lot that the parents can enjoy as well. If it were boring, if it, like someone were to go to watch Teletubbies or something like that, you know, the parents <laughs> would pull their hair out. I'm like, I'm not taking my kid to go see that because it's going to drive me crazy. You know, so yeah. it's the same thing. Like parents want to go to these games and enjoy their time at WNBA games. But unless they lower the rim and actually put on a better show, just people aren't going to want to take their daughters to go see this because it's boring. Yeah. They'll support their daughters wanting to go to it if that's what their daughters want to do but they're not they're going to be like well have fun yeah you know agreed. because it's not something they necessarily want to spend their money on i agree 100 percent. hey thank you so much yeah. for for your contribution man. that was those are some like great points i hadn't even uh, i didn't even know that stuff well yeah i appreciate you bringing me on so i could share it because i i i think it like it like i said the bottom line drives a lot I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No problem. And according to statista.com, I looked at the, you know, the the you know statistics for male versus female um, uh, sports fans. And according to statista.com, sports fans, um, or excuse me, avid fans uh, who are male are about 39%. And 13% of those avid, uh, avid excuse me, avid uh, fans are female. And for the casual fan category, 43% are male and 45% are female. So when you're looking on ticket sales and stuff like that, it it's pretty safe to assume that the majority of ticket sales to any sports venue, the, or excuse me, or the majority of sports venues are purchased by men. You know, we are the majority of sports fans. We're, we're the stereotype of sports fandom, you know? Like, <laughs> when you see Madden, like, tournaments or... Or Dave and Buster's when a, a Super Bowl's on and stuff like that. The majority of people in there, are guys. You go to watch sporting events. The majority of, of, of soccer, and, you know, or football, according to the European people, um, they call it football. You know, soccer and football, the same sport, different name. The majority of the fans are male, so they want to go watch an entertaining game and they want to see power. They want to see anger. They want to see the rivals. They want to see that. Now, for me. I think that the it's just the United States women's soccer team. Me personally, I think the United States women's soccer team should be paid based off of what they're bringing in equally to what the men are bringing in. Now, one of the reasons why the men get paid more is because majority of them belong to professional clubs already. So they have extra benefits. They have extra money coming in. So they're getting money from the clubs that they belong to outside of the United States uh, national men's soccer team. The women... A lot of them come from college and others just don't play professionally on that same level. I mean, like they just don't have a club, a a women's club who gets that same kind of demand. So the budget from their clubs is not as big as the budget from the United States uh, women's national soccer team. But the women have a lot of different um, incentives that the men don't have as well, like medical insurance and other stuff like that. So the, the pay... When you actually break down the numbers and look at the contract differences between the men's and the women's United States national soccer team, when you look at those, it's actually pretty fair.
and it's it's not it doesn't seem like it's sexual or excuse me, sexist or anything like that it seems pretty fair pretty across the board now me personally and again this is this is my own personal opinion i enjoy watching women's soccer far more than i do i do watching men's soccer the reason why is because every five seconds a man is tapping another guy and he's falling on the ground for like five to ten minutes and he's crying to god and holding his knee like there's a great skit from uh, um comedians key and peel just look up on youtube key and peel soccer skit it is hilarious because it, it exaggerates what you actually see in, in men's soccer these guys get up there and they just tap each other and they fall like they just got into the worst car wreck of their lives and they'll stay down there trying to get the extra goal kick or try to get possession of the ball trying to get a little bit of extra you know uh, added time and I just get annoyed by that because they just cry about everything and they whine about everything and they fall about everything. Now, every time I watch a woman's soccer game, these women are stepping on each other, pulling their pulling each other's hair down and freaking kicking each other, drop kicking each other, kicking the ball in their face. And they're right back up and they play. They trip the girl and the girl gets right back and play. Like it's pure to me. It's pure. And that's what I like to see. I like to see people who are freaking going head to head and and going for it you know you look at the WNBA or excuse me the WWE um the women were for a long time they were leading Smackdown and Raw they they were actually the the headliners for these events they, people were coming to see the women because they were putting on a better show than a lot of these generic male wrestlers these guys coming out and doing the same old microphone handling and the same old tricks and the woman were coming out there and starting to get pretty acrobatic so I believe that women should not get paid the same as men just because they're women. What I mean by that is I would not want to get into Harvard law school or medical school or any like high end school. I would not want to get allowed in there just because I'm black. I would not want to get a job just because I'm black. Because that's telling me that I don't have what it takes to be just as good as the next person who doesn't look like me. I want to get a job because I'm the best man for it. I want to get a job because I was the best candidate. I want to get into school because I was the best candidate and I fit the criteria they needed. Not a, uh, not a, um, a standard that they had to meet because of affirmative action. Yeah, I get why affirmative action was created. It was created to make sure that blacks would not be denied the opportunity to get employment but now the standards are so much lower and a lot of these schools are like they're lowering the standards just for blacks to get in they're saying oh you want to, you're black okay well the, 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 the these test scores are much lower for you because you're not smart enough to reach the same uh, test scores that this white person is i'm like that's stupid black people are just as smart as any other race it, it it's not a education in, in in intellect is not a race based thing it's a societal thing so if you teach people that they're victims like a lot of feminists are starting to do they're trying to say we're victims we're not getting paid the same why aren't you getting paid the same because you're not doing the same jobs that we are you're not the majority of the construction industry you're not the majority of the plumbing industry you're not the majority of the framing, building, drywall. You're not the majority of that stuff that costs a lot of work. Studies have shown, a lot of studies in fact, have shown that women don't want to do labor jobs. Of course, there are always gonna be exceptions. There always will be exceptions. There always will be women who are willing to go in there and do these labor jobs. But the majority of women would rather do easier account, like desk jobs jobs where they don't have to deal with a lot of, uh, of of physical labor but rather deal with people and men would rather do jobs where we actually work with their hands we're different that way we're just built different that's just kind of how it works so of course you're not going to get paid the same as we are when we're the ones in the sun breaking our backs risking our lives and building a house so you can sell it you know, or so you can you can go over there and, and, and inspect it to make sure every stud is where it needs to be and every every hole is drilled where it needs to be and the electricity and everything. Like these are the jobs that women would tend to do is the jobs that don't require a lot of the physical labor that men feel. 
If women want to be paid equally as men, they need to be doing the exact same things we are at the same standard we are. And now, I know that might sound biased, but there are jobs out there that women excel at far better than men, in my opinion. And also, I believe there's a lot of statistics to reach it as well. I believe women have an innate ability to nurture at a level that men cannot, which is why women make some of the best nurses. They just have an instinct, especially women who are mothers. Women who are mothers tend to have this instinct to be able to know something's wrong before it happens. They are able to pick up certain things that men don't because women tend to think about us and men tend to think about me, my role in this and what I need to do. Women just think differently than men. So when we're talking about equal payment, if we're going to take all the, uh, if we're going to take all the, um, the biased statements and take the numbers for, you know, for real, and let's be honest with ourselves, I think that people should not be paid a special way based off of the color of the skin or what's between their legs or whether or not they have XY chromosomes or XX chromosomes. You should be paid based off of the work you provide. And of course, you should always be paid fairly for the work you provide and how much money you make the company. If you're a top sales exec or talks, uh, top sales um, representative, then you definitely should be getting paid worth the top sales. If you're bringing in millions of dollars to the, uh, to the co uh, company each month or each year, you definitely should be getting paid worthy of that. If you're not, you need to go find some other company and go get paid what you're worth. Because if you're making them millions of dollars, they can afford to give you a couple extra, like at least $10, uh, you know, at least $10 extra an hour. Or they can give you a commission for each, you know, sell that you make. So it's not about sex. It's not about men and women getting paid unfairly. It's looking at the numbers and being honest. If we want change, if we want improvement, we have to actually look at the numbers, the real numbers. The only way the WNBA is going to get paid the same is if they lower that hoop. That's just really how it goes. They got to make the show, the performance, a better show. That's just, that's a given. That's a guarantee. Unless for somehow, some way, the women start to grow an average of six foot 11 and they start growing more muscle and start, and they're not lengthy and they just get up there and start dunking. Then yeah, people are going to start watching it. But when, you know, when girls play sports like little princesses, men don't want to go watch that. That's just how, that's just the honest fact. The numbers don't lie. If, if girls are going to be prissy and gentle and fragile and stuff like that, people aren't going to want to watch those sports. But women play hard like they do in soccer. Men are going to want to watch it. I'm really surprised. Like there's the lingerie football league. I'm really surprised that league is not more popular. Granted, honestly, in my opinion, they can do so much better without the lingerie. Yeah, it's, it's a great way to attract guys that are looking for, for hot you know, essential looking woman. But the fact is those women are incredible athletes. They tackle just like the men. They stiff arm just like the men and they play incredibly well. They have great defense. They throw that ball beautifully. You know, I don't see little princesses, little spoiled daddies, girls. I see athletes. And honestly, that's what I want to see. If I'm watching a swimming meet, I don't care that you're female or male. I care that you swim your heart out and you swim faster than your opponents. That's it. I'm so sick and tired of people, you know, falling in this, this victim mentality that we're not getting paid the same. They don't pay blacks as much as they do whites. Well, let's let's figure this out. Why is that? Let's actually look at the numbers. Is it like because the company could be racist? That could be real. The company might not pay blacks a certain way because of the fact that they're racist. That's possible. But it doesn't. That should not be your first stop. We shouldn't go there first. That should be the last conclusion. First, we should start looking at the numbers. Well, are the majority of the salespeople that are making the most money for this company white? Okay, that's probably why they pay them differently. Like when you look at the special forces and the Navy SEALs, the majority of these people in, in the Navy SEALs are white. But that doesn't mean that they have more opportunity to join the SEALs. It just means that more whites have joined the SEALs. Blacks have joined the SEALs too. There's, there's a number of black SEALs too. And there's a number of, of uh, black people who have applied and washed out, just like there's a number of whites who have applied and washed out. So it's not a race, you know, racist or prejudiced thing. It's the fact that sometimes 
more people that look a certain way happen to be in a certain industry. But rather than look at it the honest way and say, you know what? The company is not racist. They're just paying these people because coincidentally, they all happen to look this way. These are the people that were here first. Okay. Well, I guess I just need to work harder and maybe I can join that area and and also start getting paid like them. Then if you're producing just as much as they are and you're not getting paid the same, then you can go ahead and start going there. But we're throwing the race card in the in the in the sexist card around so much so quickly without actually doing the research, without actually going out and saying, well, you know, maybe the reason why this is happening is because we're not pulling in enough money here. How many of you out there listening have worked somewhere and you worked your butt off for a long time, but then you train somebody, somebody comes in and then they put you to train them because you know, you're, you're like the top person there, you know everything. So you train this person. All of a sudden this person is now gonna be your boss. And you're like, what the heck? How is he the boss? Or how is she the boss? You find out it's the owner's son or daughter. You're going to be butthurt. You're going to be really upset at that because you're like, this person doesn't deserve to be here. They didn't put in their time. They didn't work their way up. They're only where they are because of who they know. I know all of us. I'd, I'd, we, excuse me, I'd be willing to say that every one of us have experienced something like that. And it sucks. but I don't want to be paid a certain way because of how I look. I don't want to be the status quo. I want to be the standard. And for anyone else out there who wants to go out and say, well, you know what? You need to hire me because I'm black. That's stupid. You need to hire me because I'm Asian. That's stupid. You need to hire me because of X, Y, Z. That's stupid. The only reason a company should hire you is because you're the best candidate for the job. Not because of your religion, not because of your political affiliation, not because of your quote unquote gender identity, not because of who you love, not because of what gender you are, and not because of the color of your skin. None of that matters. It's work ethic. That's why you should get a job. That's why you should get the position. So I really encourage everyone out there right now listening I encourage every one of us to try to move aside these ignorant narratives about women not getting paid as much as men are. There are companies out there who will not pay women the same because they're women. There are companies out there. I'm not going to say they're not, but they are far from the majority. They're barely the minority. The very few, because those companies don't last very long because they get sued and they're able to prove it. And Gloria Allred, if you don't know Gloria Allred's name, she's like the leading civil rights attorney out there. And anytime a woman gets, you know, gets wronged in any way, Gloria Allred comes in her pink suit and her crazy looking hair and her mountains of face paint makeup from the body shop. (laughs) She comes out there and then she puts her arm around her client and then everyone gets or her whole team gets paid millions of dollars it never goes to trial because they know yeah when she gets involved Gloria Allred wins that's all she does her I bet her alarm is all I do is win 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 no matter what (laughs) I'm pretty sure her alarm is that it's crazy that woman knows how to win a case it's you know you've succeeded when people just look at you and go nope let's settle they see you coming down they're like nah settle it's like the old Wild West when everyone's sitting there having a good time in the saloon and, and, and joking and laughing and all of a sudden that one guy walks in there and then the music stops and everyone looks at him and is like, nope, uh, he could sit wherever he wants because I'm not drawing against him. He'll shoot me before I even touch my pistol. You know, like, it's kind of like that. Gloria Allred's that person. And now, going back to the subject at hand, which, interestingly, I wasn't planning on this, it's a segue, But Gloria Allred gets paid more than a lot of male lawyers out there. So again, the legal world is not sex-based. It's based off performance. If you can bring the victories, if you can bring in the money, the pay will mirror that. Women, you guys are incredible treasures. You're you're such incredible people. But I, I fear 
that so many women out there, an increasing number of you, not all, but an increasing number of you are adopting this victim mentality, which people are pushing. And I'm going to tell you, victims don't fight back. Victims cry, they whine, and nothing changes. Warriors fight back. Warriors don't complain. I don't hear, I've never heard Navy SEALs, and, and I've worked in them, and I've been in the military, I've, I've met a number of these operatives, these people that are special forces, I've never heard them complain. They figure out a way and they fight back. So don't adopt a, a, a victim mentality and go, oh my gosh, they're not paying me the same because I'm, I'm a woman. Don't let that be your first stop. Make sure before you make that claim or adopt that thought that it's factual. If you are the top earner and you're a woman, you're you're the top earner in your in your uh, uh, firm or your company, or you're giving out the best uh, results, and your company is not willing to pay you what they're paying other people, then you can go ahead and say this is a sexist company, or this owner or the manager is sexist. They won't pay me because I'm a woman. Then you can go ahead and you start you know marking your cells and you start recording your cells. You start looking up and again this is not legal advice these are suggestions um i'm not an attorney but it's always important to make sure that you build a case before you you fight you don't wait to the end to start building a case because you can get fired before that so you build your case you're like okay they're not paying me the same these other guys are getting paid 35 dollars an hour and they're actually bringing in less money than i am and they're paying me at 20 dollars an hour okay so I'm going to start proving how much money I'm making and how much in sales I'm actually producing. I'm making the company, you know, $2 million a year. These guys are making all together. They're making the company $750,000 a year. So I should be getting paid twice as much as if, if not more. Okay. So you start recording these numbers, recording these sales, start taking pictures, start creating evidence, build your case. And then when you contact a civil rights attorney because they won't pay you more or whatever, then you can go ahead and sit there and say, hey, may I speak with Gloria Allred? <laughs> I think Gloria Allred has the type of uh, reputation that if she were to park her car in the McDonald's parking lot, she'd be met with a ton of lawyers saying, how much are you willing to settle for? There's a blank check. You tell us what we're going to settle for and we'll be on our way. <laughs> I think she could take down the McDonald's corporation. She's that good. And McDonald's is like, <laughs> they're, they're like this, you know, this, they're the, uh, the deep state government fast food industry. They're like super hardcore. Uh, those guys are, yeah, the McDonald's mafia. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I think that if we stop adopting this victim mentality, the world will be a better place. You can't live as a victim. You will only die as a victim. Victims don't live, they die. Whether you die mentally, die inside, you die. And for all the black people out there, out there listening, please do not adopt this mentality that you're less fortunate or disadvantaged because of the color of your skin. Because I'm telling you that there are tons of of very successful and very wealthy individuals out there who look like you and I, who have black skin. You just don't see them on TV because it goes against the narrative. For all you Latinos out there, you are some of the hardest working people, not to take away from any other race, but you guys are such hardworking individuals. Don't let anyone make you feel like you're not welcome. If you're willing to build a better life, for yourself an honest way and trying to make money doing it without selling drugs and breaking the law and committing crimes then go for it that's the american dream that's what my brothers and sisters fought and died for that's american right there don't adopt the victim mentality nobody regardless of your race for all my my white brothers and sisters out there listening don't adopt this stupid critical race theory there's a lot of things going out there to make people feel bad about themselves. What does that do? That lowers morale, which allows people to become more manipulatable. I probably pronounced that word wrong. I think it's manipulable. 
manipulatable. I don't know. One of those words. You know what I'm trying to say. Able to be manipulated. There you go. I got a tongue twister for some reason. But do not adopt critical race theory thinking that you're you're born with the inherent desire to be racist. Because kids, when they're playing with each other, they don't realize that there's differences in the color of the skin. They don't even realize that they have a penis or a vagina. They don't realize there's differences between the, them and girls. They don't know this stuff. They don't think about it. They don't care about this stuff. This stuff is taught to them at a later age. Critical race theory is stupid. It's, a, it's the dumbest theory I've ever heard. So don't adopt it. None of you have ever owned slaves. So stop apologizing for slavery. You didn't own slaves. You didn't, you didn't hang me. You didn't put shackles around my neck. Nobody's owned a slave that's alive today unless maybe you live in Africa. Because if you didn't know, there's a massive slave trade out in Africa. It's actually the leading slave trade in the world. Irony. I'm just saying, let's look at facts. Let's stop fighting with feelings. Let's start fighting back with facts. Don't remain silent when people who call themselves feminists are actually not asking for feminism. They're not actually asking for feminist equality. They're asking for superiority. They want to put men down so that they can raise themselves up, which is not fair. It's not fair to anyone. That's unfair, just like the happy wife, happy life concept of marriage, where your wife is always right and everything she wants you do, and you shut your mouth and you just stay there unless she tells you to do something. That's not a happy life for you. What right does she get to be to be happy and you got to be miserable the entire time? You have a right to be happy just like she is. If she's right, she's right. If she's wrong, she's wrong. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You don't have to always be right. and You don't have to always be wrong. But you do have to communicate and work together. Be willing to sacrifice and meet each other halfway. And don't settle. Don't settle for good looks. Don't settle for a sexy body. Don't settle for great sex. That stuff comes and goes, I'm telling you. What you fall in love with is the heart and soul of a person, the character. Because if you get if you get married to a partner that is gorgeous, whether male or female, they're gorgeous and they have great sex, but they're lazy, good for nothing, pieces of scum. When you have kids with that person, it's gonna annoy you like crazy because you're you're gonna realize that you're by yourself. So I wanted to say all those things just because there's a lot of narratives out there just, d- that are just dividing us. And one of the biggest narratives is that you have to listen to me, but I don't have to listen to you. Very common. Don't adopt that either. Just because you disagree with someone's opinion doesn't give you the right to silence them. But it does give you the right to fight back with logic in the right circumstances. I'm not asking anyone to go to another person's church that you don't agree with their their faith or their beliefs. And then you're like, I don't agree with what you're saying. Like, uh, then why did you come in here? You don't have to be in this church. No one asked you to come in here. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that doesn't give you right to go and disrupt somebody else's right to worship how they how they want and where they may. So with that being said, I just wanted to ask before I, I conclude, um, if anybody has anything they'd like to share, any points, any opinions they'd like to open up with, if there's something I'm missing, some uh, facts you'd like to contribute, or maybe some details that I hadn't considered. I'd love to hear your opinion. You're welcome to reach out. I'd love to have you on the show. And as always, you know, Real Talk with RJ is a very important uh, project for myself. I really enjoy it. I really love it so much. I really love having the input of my fans and and those who are willing to listen. Um, We're continuing to grow and we're reaching more parts of the world. And I'm just so grateful that out of all the places you could be, you're you're choosing to sit here and listen to me. You're sitting here and investing your time being willing to talk. And... I am sincerely an advocate for women. I believe women should have equal treatment. I believe women are like God's first gift to man, to mankind, not just men, but mankind. Women bring such a beauty to the world, such a sincere value that cannot be counted or measured in any way. Having said that, I don't think that any of us male or female, black or white, regardless of your your differences, I don't think anyone should be advantaged more than the other person if they have not earned that. 
I should not be given the job because of the color of my skin or because of who I know. I should be the best candidate and given that job. That's how it should be. It should be fair. It should be honest. Women should get paid equally for equal, not only for equal work, but equal results in said work. Because again, men and women are playing basketball in two different leagues. They're doing the exact same job where they're, pers- uh, they're producing different results. So just because you're doing the same job doesn't mean you're producing the same results. I think if women are producing the same results as men as their counterparts, they should be getting paid the exact same. But if they're not getting if they're not producing the same results then they should not expect to get paid the same. It's not fair to men. Because why are men working harder in these circumstances than these scenarios and women are getting paid just as much? What's this, what's it how is that fair to either of them? I believe in equality. I'm an advocate for equality. As I always say, I would stand and defend the rights of a satanic worshiper just like I would for a Christian. Even if I disagree with their beliefs, I stand and defend free speech, free religion, free assembly, and freedom of the press. I may have I have the right to disagree, but I will have the obligation until out my last breath to defend the free speech of another person. That's what I'm a veteran and that's what I believe in. And as a Christian, I defend free speech because the same right that defends you defends me. And to silence you is to allow other people to silence me. And I will not be silenced. I refuse. What I may say is not always going to be popular, but the fact is, it's my honest opinion. And I speak out loud because if I have the wrong information, I would love to learn correct information. I'm not ashamed or or too uh, proud to admit I was wrong or didn't know something. I love learning. I want to learn. That's one of the reasons why I invite people on the show with me. I ask you to please participate. Please reach out. I'd love to hear what you have to say because you could teach me something that helps me become better than I was yesterday. And ultimately, that's the goal. I want to be better today than I was yesterday. That's my minimum goal. Every day, I want to be better than the day before. Because who benefits from it? Not just me. My fiance benefits from it. My kids will benefit from it. My son, when he and I are reunited, uh, if if you have listened to my show for a long time, you know that I have a little boy whom I love so much, but um, due to differences between his mother and I, which I'm not going to go into into depth, um, I just don't have a relationship with my little boy like I really want to. There's too much of a risk there uh, between his mother and I, and despite my best efforts to be there for him, I'm just not able to. And I really wish that I could be there for my little boy because I love and miss him so much. Having said that, um, I'm working on myself every day so I can become better than I was the day before so that when he does come to see me, he will see for a fact that his daddy always loved him and that his daddy always knew he would come and that I will provide an incredible life and future for him to the best of my ability. That's what I want so much with all my heart. And... Again, I just want to thank each one of you guys for uh, for spending this time with me. I truly value your input. I truly value your, your feedback and your opinions because ultimately I want the world to be a better place and I'm doing my part to help shape it that way. I don't want people to agree with me or agree against me. I want people to agree with truth. That's what I want. I seek after truth. Even if I don't like it, I still seek after truth. And if more of us are willing to accept truth as it is, not as we want it to be, the world will be a better place and peace will reign. And your kids will once again be able to go to schools in a very safe environment. Again, you can feel free to look up my podcast, Real Talk with RJ, anywhere podcasts are available, especially Spotify. And you can also email me if you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts. You can email me at ross.curtis. 723 at gmail.com just put in the subject line podcast so i know it's from you and feel free to look at my book soul guardian by rj kurtz that's my pseudonym it's a book about vampires that's very unique and it's never been done before i know you're gonna love it and i love to hear your feedback about it have a great evening and thank you so much for spending time with me on real talk with rj signing out